right, welcome back, y'all. We are talking about the importance of sleep, and today we're talking about the exciting stuff, which is what to do. And specifically, we'll be talking about understanding duration and the importance of consistency with our bedtime and rise time. And this is based on the information that we've learned already about how sleep works. So remember, we talked about um, sleep design and how we have ideally these five cycles we're going through, which for most people is gonna take seven to nine hours of bedtime within each one of those cycles. Typically we might be awake, we're gonna go through uh, REM sleep or REM sleep, and then we're also gonna cycle through stages one through four. And so to do that, we have to have that seven to nine hours of bedtime. And I wanna emphasize bedtime. This does not mean that you need to lay down and be asleep the entire time. Most people are gonna wake up two or three times in the middle of the night. Maybe you remember, maybe you don't. But ideally what we're gonna do is um, plan for eight plus hours of bedtime. And if at some point after doing that consistently, over a period of time, we notice that we get plenty of rest with a little bit less than that, we can always titrate back. But we wanna start with that eight plus hours um, because less than six hours over the long term is deadly. So we wanna find our ideal rise time and that ideal rise time is the time that will allow us to get up and get ready for the day and we're not rushing and ideally that factors in a little bit of quiet time, maybe a fitness routine. You know your schedule, um, but we definitely don't wanna be rushing. So find that ideal rise time um, and that needs to be consistent, you know, even on weekends. But anyway, that ideal rise time to get ready for the day and then backwards plan eight plus hours, maybe eight hours starting out. And maybe that feels like something that's unachievable or, un, or impossible, you know, in the beginning. And that's perfectly fine. We still want to know what that ideal bedtime is. And then what we can do is start to get in bed 30 minutes earlier for a couple of weeks until we're habituated to that and then do that again for a couple of weeks, another 30 minutes earlier, until we get to our ideal bedtime, okay? So start with small 30 minute increments. And um, I think what's very, very useful for most people is setting an alarm in your phone. So setting an alarm for one and a half to two hours before your projected bedtime, and that will give you an unconscious or non-conscious cue to start winding down. So what's beautiful about this alarm, I love using alarms for all kinds of different things. When that alarm goes off, and uh, when I have it on my iPhone, uh, it, and I still use it to this day, when it goes off, I think I get a little uh, vibration, my little light starts to flash, so it's, it's almost impossible for me not to look at my phone. And so when you look at that message, when you look at that alarm, you're basically telling your body to start to wind down and get ready for bed. So even if you're in a situation where you feel like you can't do anything about it, like you're out at a social situation or something, um, it is something that you can't unsee. And so at an unconscious level, you do already start to wind down and wanna get ready for bed. It's such a powerful thing. So setting an alarm in your phone is extremely powerful. In some phones, in the iPhone, uh, I think it's called night shift or bedtime or something like that. Um, it automatically has this option for, I think an hour as long as it goes out. I think what's ideal is an hour and a half to two hours because that gives you plenty of time to start to wind down and get ready for bed and incorporate maybe even a bedtime routine. So alarms are super powerful. And then remember for circadian rhythms, we need two things. We need the consistency with our schedule. This entrains our body to expect a bedtime and a rise time. So even if that's slightly out of sync with you know, the uh, uh, timing of the daylight and the, night, uh, the light and dark schedules, um, that's perfectly fine because mine's kind of out of sync with that. I usually get up at 3.30 in the morning and sometimes you know, that's close to sunrise and sometimes it's pretty far away. I'm usually in bed by 6.37 or 7.30 at the latest. And in the summer, like the sun's still up. I have blackout shades in my room. So part of my sleep schedules have been entrained through consistency with my schedule. And then part of that is also um, you know, emphasized by being out in the brightness during the day and turning off all my stuff at night. So we need those two things. We need consistency and we need the mimicking of the day during the day and the mimicking of the night during the night. All right. Now, notes, handouts, and resources are always all located at community.superhumantransformation.com. And we will see you guys in the next video.